Okay, I believe we're live. Good, good Friday morning, right? Um, John Howe with the Raptor Resource Project here. We are uh, all happy to be here for After the Fledge 2021. And I'm going to show you the bright-eyed uh, eagle fans that we've got here this morning. Um, So we are, we're, yeah, hi mom. Was that mom Decora or your mom, mom? Both of them, right? All right. And we'll talk more about that, but mom Decora and DM2 and the Osprey have been here already this morning. So um, we're going to do a little virtual tour here of the hatchery. It's a, it's a really great place to be. And, uh, just going to kind of ramble on here and tell you what we're seeing and talk to some people as we go around. And I think we're going to end up talking to Brian uh, and get some more information about what's going on at the hatchery here too. So, um, all right. So let's get going. You guys are welcome to follow along if you want to hear it in person or just uh, go about and do your, your thing. So I'm just going to take a tour around the hatchery. All right, so I guess first place uh, that want to show here is uh, our memorial bench to uh, Bob Anderson. Bob Anderson and Neil Reddig with the uh, precursor of American Eagle started this whole uh, education journey that we've had here, and that was back in 2007. So... Uh, just uh, honoring Bob, and this is the bench that's here with, uh, could be Mom, Decora, or Dad. Well, both of them there. So we got an eagle. Uh, just beautiful bench here. We're at the visitor center, and I'm just going to pull out here and give you a little shot of it. Sheltering all of our uh, crew here, and actually one of our cameras uh, with a red wing blackbird up there to say good morning is up on top. Uh, that's our pavilion cam and that gives us nice views of the bluff over here which uh, yeah, it's a little bit bright with the sun here and it's kind of hazy this morning with a little bit of moisture in the air but uh, uh, that cam gives us great views of the eagles when they're on the bluff and also on the new maple tree that we can't see on the other side right now and then over towards the hatchery, uh, we've got some pine trees there where mom was sitting before. Um, and she'll sit up there and she'll watch for fish uh, opportunities in the raceways over at the hatchery. We'll take a look at those in a little bit. And she'll also watch, oh, there she goes. She's got a blackbird chasing after her. I'm not sure if you can see her, but we'll see if she flies over this way. I think she just landed in the maple tree. So. We can hear her. We can hear her a little bit, but uh, well, maybe we'll walk over this way first, so you guys can get a chance to possibly see mom. So in the, it's hard to see in the foreground here. We've got the overflow retention pond. Uh, this is a fish hatchery, and the spring water from Sewer Springs is really what uh, kind of made this the the choice spot to raise fish we got cool fresh spring water and that water is used uh, to raise rainbow trout here's the overflow retention pond we were talking about and this uh, uh, fish can be flushed through the raceways uh, into this retention pond and there's quite a bit of fish that live in here So this is also one of the spots that historically mom and dad Decora and DM2 have been Fishing out of and typically they'll do that over in the corner You can see cars lined up from the attendees that are here and I think everyone Every, everyone is uh, basically here because Mom Decora flew over. 
So we're going to see if we can get a view of Mom Nicora carefully. We don't want to scare her away. That's the neat thing about the eagles here is that they are used to humans. So we get a view of the current maple tree here, and I'm going to move around a little bit here, but uh, we'll see and maybe we can zoom the camera in a little bit. Right. If you want to try to zoom it in a little bit. So our cam operator, Dave, is you have to point it at the front of the camera. It's a uh, line of sight. You got to be from the front. Okay. There you go. Let's see if we can see her. It's kind of hard to see her, but she is right on the end of that branch there. I go left, I think. No, oh, she's right up there. Go ahead and zoom it in. Oh, it's hard to see. Yeah, it's hard to see her with the lighting. Yeah. That's okay. This is uh, not the best camera to see mom, but anyway. So we have our folks here, you can zoom out, Dave, that are getting their shots of mom decora while she is looking for opportunities to fish. So you can zoom it back I out. Did. Okay. I did, yeah. So we'll keep going here, but feel free to sit here and watch and take pictures of Mom Decora, everyone, uh, while we go and take a tour of the hatchery. So, we know where you are. We know you're your okay. choice. Yeah, we're so we're going to keep moving here. If you watch any of the, uh, the food drops at Decora North, I mean, you've seen that. Uh, there's a pool, there's a pool, there's a pool, just so. so again, as I was mentioning, the water clarity is pretty hazy right now. We just had some pretty intense rainstorms earlier this week, and that will affect the clarity of the water, the ability of the eagles to see fish underwater. Sometimes they're floating and dead, and they can pick them out of this overflow pond, um, but Mom is looking over at the raceways. So we're going to take a loop around and look at the creek in the spring, and then we will uh, um, go see if we can meet up with Mr. Brian. So, you'll see along here, uh, along most of the areas of the hatchery, there's, we can see, it's hard to sell with the camera here, but uh, wild, native wild flowers are planted all along here. Um, it is really kind of a haven for birds smaller birds. We've got flower gardens. We've got some birds sitting on the posts over here. In the winter months, we usually have a lot of Canadian geese that come in here, and that's because the water is not frozen. So we're looking over here at the pine trees, pine trees in the uh, foreground here, and that's, uh, like I said, one of the prime points where mom decora and DM2, and when the young were here, um, they're not in this area this year because of the... Because of the... Uh, the, the, the young are over at N3 this year. So we've got a little bike rack here and the Friends of the Fitch, well actually one of our work programs that after the fledge one year was to fix up and paint the eagle's nest here. We got the iron eagles and the eaglets. Oh, looks fine. And there's our bike rack right there. That's okay. 
Good morning. So we're gonna go. We're gonna go over and take a look at the fish area here. So what we're coming up to is uh, sewer spring, and this feeds water to the fish hatchery, as I mentioned. We can see the birds eating bird seed right from the flowers. Way off in the background we see somebody fishing for trout. Hopefully they're having some luck. But a uh, uh, neat shot here just looking at the life cycle of the trout. I'm not sure if we're going to be able to get that in here. All right. So. We'll take a look at the spring over here. We're going to head over to the spring next. And uh, this is going to be pretty busy with fishermen, fisherwomen, fisher everybody, basically. <laughs> when And right now I think that this has been my problem. My issue is whenever I've come down here to fish, there's been a really intense rainstorm. And the water clarity goes down. And the fishing success is not near as good when the water clarity is cloudy so or the water is up at that high so um, that has been the problem that I've had every time I've been down here ready to fish so um, that's the case here today and that might be why we don't see a lot of fisher well we I've seen one person here fishing today and I'm not sure that if they've had any success but let's take a look through here we've got beautiful wildflowers, echinacea, photographer flower, a woodchuck, a woodchuck, okay. Is that, is that what it is? <laughs> yeah, it looks like it. So this is the spring where people fish and it's, it's stocked and then there's also native trout in here, the brown trout. The uh, Trees Forever and the part Friends of the Decorah Fish Hatchery do a lot of projects here to help uh, restore some of the native plants and obviously the fish. Brook trout are here, rainbow trout, brown trout, white sucker, sculpin, and creek chub, although the fish hatchery is producing what kind of trout? Rainbow trout? Rainbow trout. There are native brown trout in the creeks and streams here in Iowa. So here's a neat spot here. You can see the water rushing through. People will fish off of the bridge. People will fish off of this nice little concrete spot here. And See, the problem here is right now is that it's hard to see if there's any fish there. We will get a chance to see some trout, though, I believe, when we go over to the hatchery and take a look at in the raceway. So, let's go up and take a look at the actual uh, spring that comes through. And I'm told that this spring is the second largest spring in Iowa, in northeast Iowa. So, let's go quick take a look at that. This water is cool also. If you guys have come over by, you'll notice that there seems to be like a cool feeling by it. And that's because the aeration of the water and the evaporation of water takes up heat. And it actually will cool the air. A lot of the uh, misting fans that they have these days are based on that technology. So um, we're going to come up here. You folks online here watching this, you won't be able to feel the cool air but we probably will. I had a feeling if I put the camera down, they might uh, be tricked into thinking that this might be feeding time.
to see this many trout at one time is a pretty amazing thing. All right, we got we got mom. She's coming by to say hi. She just flew behind the trees. There she goes. She's got a blackbird chasing her. And there she goes to land. That's what you get to see when you come here to the Decorah Fish Hatchery. So let's look at a few more of these. You can see the swirls, they're splashing the camera lens there. Is that, yeah, you can spread it with your hand, just grab some in your hand and throw it out there. All right, so they will see that and you can see them diving and grabbing the food. It's kind of like the water will boil. Go ahead and throw a little bit more in there. Only fish hatchery in the state? No, there's there's wow, multiple <laughs> multiple fish hatcheries in yeah. Iowa. Look at that. Look at them. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Wow. Are they neat? They're neat. You can see the rainbow colors and the spots on them. Alright. Well let's keep going over here. Well, good morning. Good morning, John. How Hello, Brian. I'm doing just fine. Um, let's get this way here, so a little bit better lighting. So, uh, so tell us a little bit about what you've been seeing around here. Well, obviously, a lot of the adults are sitting in the in the tree right now. Yeah. So, Mom Decora is here. Yeah. For about three weeks before the floods, they pretty much stayed closer to the nest. But since the floods, it seems like they're spending five to six hours at least per day here. Both, you know, the male and the female are uh -huh. doing that. So, yeah. And today the people got to see the osprey decided to flex its muscles. And osprey like fish too, right? Yeah, <laughs> but they, see, they were attacking the female sitting in the pine tree. They either sit in, they're either sitting, lately they've either sat in the pine tree or... All right, on them in the maple tree or in the pine tree, right by the office. Okay. The yep. Shop. Right, right above where Brian is, those pine trees back there. That's yep. where Mom was earlier, and we saw. I got reports that both Mom and DM too were sitting on the maple tree earlier. Yep. Oh, so, today. Yeah. This yeah. Morning. He's been, he's been here more and more. Um, yep. I don't know if he's just following her. Or what? But he's you can more. usually tell if it's him or her. If there's only one in there. If he's nervous if you stop underneath him and stuff. Right. Where she just ignores you. So you can tell the two just by that. Right. But he, you know, throughout the nesting cycle, he, he would sit here too, but not as much as she would. He would stay more on the fringe of the hatchery. Okay. And stuff. I have a question. Yeah, so that's I, neat. I have a question about the fish. Edward. Question about the fish we have oh, here? I don't know any okay. answers for that. <laughs> okay, I was wondering... Do they put them here as eggs, or do they come as small fish and, and we, mature? That's a good different? question. Um, we're actually a rearing facility. So the trout program in Iowa is not big enough that we maintain multiple rootstocks, and we maintain multiple places to incubate eggs. So our Manchester Fish Hatchery, which is about two hours south of us, they spawn the fish or incubate the eggs. Mm -hmm. And then they transfer the fish to us at about three inches. And then it takes us 18, it's a total of 18 months to go from egg to catchable size trout. So the catchable size trout's a 10 and a half to 11 inches. What did you say, 18 months? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So like these fish in this raceway are mm -hmm. about four inches right now. They'll be used next June. Mm -hmm. And they were spawned in September of 2020. So. We act, everything we do is actually a year and a half in advance. So like any of the 10 and a half to 11 inch fish that you see on the hatchery right now are that eagles are eating, 
by November they'll all be gone. Mm -hmm. So like I one thing I like what I tell everybody, to be honest, twenty twenty one is irrelevant for us as production because we already have our fish ready. Mm -hmm. And we're we're gearing up to put to get ready for twenty twenty two. So in this raceway there's eight thousand fish. In this raceway there's thirty thousand fish. Oh because they're fingerlings, they take less space. And so as these continue to grow, we'll continue to divide them and spread them out. So by October, November, all our raceways will be full again, but they'll all be full of little fish. Manchester actually has the blue fish. Our big fish are in the center pond. And the biggest one in there is probably seven and a half, eight, eight pounds. We, but every year we call about 900 fish out of our pop food sack population. We divide them amongst the three the three trout hatches, and so we stock one to two of those fish out per stream per week to allow anglers a chance to catch broken sized fish. Is that the place that mom and PM2 eat out of that? Yeah. Oh, that's a, a frequently asked question. Is well, that's the one they take. Okay, how much does mom weigh? Nine to eleven pounds. Yeah. So can you picture picking up a seven pound fish and flying no. it two and a half miles? No. no. That's what they often way back they used to say they took a cat. <laughs> Again, what's a even a farm cat weigh to compared to their weight? They have tried to pick them up when we've had them die and put them in the pond. You know, they flush them to the pond, um, and they just can't they can't pick them up. So what they do is. They sit in that tree just like you see. She's, what she's doing is she's waiting for Steve to feed her. <laughs> so right now they're they walking around. They're bending all the dead fish because we have dirty water. We can't see, but they're netting all the dirty fish and flushing down the silver pipe, which they know in about 20 minutes they'll come out to pond behind her and she'll swoop down and take them. They're smart enough to know if we take the net off the feet trailer, they're going to get to say. <laughs> I mean, because they're, you watch their whole dispositions, but then you watch us come out and we're feeding. If they see us pick the net up, their attention span definitely got more acute. <laughs> so, you know, I tell everybody, eagles, you guys all give eagles a better credit than they deserve. <laughs> They're a turkey vulture, but right. pretty. <laughs> but that being said, they're not stupid by no means. I mean, they're very, they, I'm a firm believer they recognize the three of us that work here. To be honest, I mean, you guys all say, did you see what they did on the camera or did you see this? None of us watch it. But we see them every day. I mean, we see them for real. Your, your guys' world is this. We're this. And so, but they recognize us. And we, uh, we wreck just like that. We know between which ones do. And she will actually start. The last couple of years, she started that. So she'll start. We can hear mom. <laughs> yeah. And believe it or not, she does. She will. When it's just us. She'll start chirping like, feed me. <laughs> well, she doesn't try to come in and fish off of here. She waits Out of the raceways? No. Their wingspans say six and a half feet. This is, you know, normally we used to have baffles in every keyway, so that was an eight foot square. So they fly down and, you know, that's too big. They're a, a jet, they're not a fighter jet, they're a jumbo jet. So they'll take fish out of the pond, but this year she start she started doing something different this spring that we that we watched. Is she would land on the concrete, duck under the wires, and walk in and get a fish, oh. Oh. <laughs> and then come back out. Oh, great. Um, she's never been as the original male was much more efficient at catching fish. She's never since she's been here since 2008. She's never been quite as efficient. But she's never usually walked in. Juveniles, we watch juveniles do it. Over the years that most people don't understand, we've actually saved several juveniles because they've jumped in the raceways and can't get out. And so they get hypothermic. Because our water right now is running about 
This year's it's actually a lot warmer than in years past, but it's about 57 degrees. So within five to ten minutes, they can be hypothermic. So Robin actually, Rom has pictures of one, and she helped helped me in a, the weight uh, weight training guy for Upper Iowa University fish one out, and I just made sure she didn't post any of the pictures because knowing the eco people would go crazy. <laughs> <laughs> see that. What are you but talking she, about, Brian? <laughs> yeah. But she was she actually was hypothermic, but that eagle friend we actually fished that that juvenile out five different times. Oh, and then she figured out how to get out so then she would just jump in and <laughs> get a fish and then jump back out. But it took her five times to figure it out. I think a couple years ago I was out here and there was a tank and it said lunkers. Is that right? Is What's that? It said lunkers. Like yeah, can you show us some of those fish? bigger fish? Yeah, we just got to walk Let's down do there. Let's do that quick and then uh, we're just about out of time here. So we'll take a look at some of the larger trout here. I can see the larger fins right here. Brian's going to show us where the biggest ones are, so I and better. If you guys want to know, like we, we just put out all these educational panels this year. And it'll if you read them, it'll tell you a lot about trout and, you know, how, what we go through. And Mom is up in the maple tree as we're walking down here. She sees Brian, right? And she recognizes him, even yeah. though he's in a crowd. <laughs> Believe it or not, they do, uh, when I worked in Idaho, we had a pair that wintered at the hatchery, and a friend of mine was a wildlife photographer, and he tried to get pictures of them, and we can walk, that pair, we could walk within 10, 12 feet of them, <laughs> and they wouldn't let him walk up to them, and so we even put him in our uniforms, and we all wore the same uniforms. So, like these fish will be stocked out in November. You got a little bit of food left? Okay. We're going to see if we can see some of the bigger ones. There's about, right now there's about 350 of them left in here. So, you want to hook? Oh, just a little bit farther out. <laughs> Yeah, nope, they don't want to, nor, there's about 350 fish that are in here that are, are anywhere from about two and a half to seven pounds. One question, what well, oh, you can oh, see that one. Right there. Wow. One question well, a lot of people always no, ask, because they eat, you know, the pond over there is the one that they take the fish from behind you, mm. that they always ask us, you know, what's in our food and is, you know, anything going to hurt them? These fish are a food fish for humans, so we can't put any chemicals or any additives that aren't approved by the FDA. So it's the same thing for, you know, basically the eagles. There's nothing, no chemicals in this, in the fish or in the food that would affect the eagles. But early on when they first started, when they, the, Everybody started watching them on the internet. That was a big concern for everybody. They, there's something in these that's not organic or whatever, and there's something in our food that would hurt them. We got one hungry trout here. <laughs> you see how black it is? That shows you that it's in, it's in a stress mode. And it's in because of it's it's in mud because of the rain we got a couple days ago. So if yeah, if the water was clear, they would be very they're very colored up. All right. Well, hey, we're gonna wrap this up. Thanks so much, Brian. You betcha. Thanks for the tour. We'll be back and we'll do one more of these, I believe, at noon. Right? No. No, we're doing two of them three. Okay, that's right. Next, uh, 
Next stop here is going to be N3. So we're going to wrap things up here and we'll head over to the new nest that uh, Mom and DM2 used and where D37, 38, and 39 uh, fledged and maybe we'll get some views of them here uh, later today. We'll see.